Hello and welcome to another Ionic Creator video where today I'm going to be talking about how to use some of the native features of the device using Cordova and specifically we're going to learn how to access the camera so that we can take a picture. So a lot of apps of course want to be able to take pictures or access the camera. I mean these days um, who doesn't have at least one if not two cameras on board their smartphone and we often want to leverage these cameras to be able to make um, maybe an Instagram or Snapchat type application, or maybe you're capturing these images to do something with them. And so luckily for us, the native Android and iOS camera can be accessed easily using the Ionic framework. Um, and what we're gonna be using is the Angular JS extension called NG Cordova. And so if we're using the Ionic creator, which we are, Using plugins is a little difficult because when we are accessing native device features from within our app, like the camera, using Cordova plugins, we can add the plugins into Creator, but then we um, have to test outside of our browser environments. So we have to actually have a device that we can test on because that's how we actually access that native feature of the device. So while this video, um, I'm gonna show you how to use the camera, I'm also gonna show you how to um, get that onto your device so that you can test. So in this tutorial, we're going to be using the NG Cordova uh, set of extensions for AngularJS. So if you're not familiar with NG Cordova, this is a collection of AngularJS extensions that allow us to access the um, Cordova API and make things a little easier when we're wanting to write our JavaScript. So what you're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to the NG Cordova website. We're going to need to download the latest release if you don't already have it. Um, you can either click download like I did there and it'll download for you. Or you can go out to their GitHub and you can get the latest release if you want. Um, you know, and you can go through here and pick out a specific one if you're looking for something specific. But honestly, the one that you get off the main website is, is perfectly fine. So once you have the package downloaded, you're going to come into the dist folder and you're going to find the ng cordova min.js file. Now, we're, we can't copy this anywhere. We're going to have to create this file essentially over here in our project. So over here in our code section, under other JS, we're going to click the plus so that we add a new file and we're going to add a file named the exact same thing because we're essentially going to copy and paste. Um, there's no way to add a file into the Ionic creator like you can't upload one. So this is the way we have to do it. So it's going to be ng cordova dot min dot js. So watch your spellings and your hyphens and things like that. So it's going to give us, um, you know, just like a blank module. We're just going to delete everything out of there. Come over to our min.js. I'm just going to open that up with uh, like Notepad, right? And it's minified. So if you're not familiar with a minified file, it's it's all of the code that you would get in the standard JS, right? You could open the Cordova.js, but it's compressed so that it will download faster in our browser. So I just did a Control A, Control C, right? Select all, copy. And then we're gonna paste that into our window over here, right? Looks like a mishmash of stuff and save. So that will add that Cordova library into our um, application. Then we're gonna come over here to this tab on the right that says code settings. And you'll see that our file has already been added automatically under our external JS, um, but we're gonna have to add it to our Angular modules. So over here under Angular Modules, we're just going to type ng Cordova. Um, actually, I think the C is capitalized. No hyphen here, right? ng Cordova, all one word. All right, we hit Enter, and that adds it to our list of modules. So next, we can go in and pick out some Cordova plugins. So that's this third tab over here. All right, you can go look up the great big list at cordova.apache.org uh, Cordova of all of the plugins that are available. But since we're working with the camera today, we're gonna look for Cordova hyphen plugin hyphen camera. All right, and when we find it, we are gonna add it to our list. So make sure it shows up right here. 
in our list. So we should have the NG Cordova listed under our Angular modules, and we should have the Cordova plugin camera listed under our plugins. All right, so now we're ready to actually make some magic. <laughs> and so let's come back over to our uh, layout, and I'm going to add a button. And this is the button we're going to click when we want to take a picture. So I'm just going to put take picture. And then we also probably want to display that image when we're done with it. So I'm going to add in an image control. And I'm going to switch instead of upload image, we're going to switch to text input and we're going to use a template tag. I'm going to name my image. Um, let's use IMG URI, right? Just a basic image locator name, whatever you want to name it. This is just the variable. And then we're going to get started on our code. Now I already know I'm going to name my method um, take picture. So let's come over to our button and just hook up that click event. We don't have the function yet, but that way we don't forget to do it. So click on your Angular directive. We're going to make an ng click event for take picture. Open close parenthesis. And that's pretty much all we have to do to the UI to make this happen. So let's come over to our code. I'm going to open this real big. Make sure we're on our page. We've got our basic controller function. All right, now there's one thing we have to do up here where it says scope, state params. Anytime you've added in an additional module in that um, code settings section, we also have to add it up here in our function. So I'm going to add our dollar sign Cordova camera. Right, because we added in that that package. All right, so let's set up our take picture function. We've written functions before, so hopefully that's not too new for us. Now, in uh, the documentation, if you go look through how Cordova, um, it has a built-in method called get picture, and that's ultimately the method that we call when we want to access the camera. The get picture method takes in a whole bunch of different options. And so essentially, we're just going to set up all of the options that pertain to what it is that we're doing here. So um, you have things like quality. You have to spell quality correctly. Um, and you can pull up the documentation for these. Destination type. Uh, we want a data URL. So I'm going to do camera destination type dot data URL. Oops, these are commas. Uh, a source type. And so our source type is coming from the camera. So that's camera picture source type dot camera. You can actually get information from other places, like in the gallery. Um, allow edit. So after the image is taken, um, the application will attempt to open whatever the default picture editor app is so that the picture can be edited. If you don't want this, set it to false. Encoding type. Um, we want a JPEG. You can pick another type if you want, but um, I have JPEGs are easy. Uh, target width, you can set, let's just do 300 by 300, target height, um, if you want, we're going to pop over options, um, the camera pop over options is the default or at least the recommended set that you use. Gotta be careful with your caps here. And then save to photo album. After the user takes and edits their picture, do you want them to save it? In this case, I'm gonna say false. Of course, if you do want them to save it, you can set it to true, and then it would show up in the user's gallery later. Okay, so let's set up our uh, get picture. So this is on the Cordova camera plugin, so get picture takes in options then our function 
we have our image data. Image data is what is coming in from the camera. And so remember I named the template tag that is going to show up in my picture image URI. So scope.image URI is going to equal data colon image. And it's a JPEG. And we're using base 64. Hold on a second, I'll explain that. Let me finish this line here. And then appending the image data that we got from the camera. And then to end this off, um, if we have an error, then you could do something with it. <laughs> Not doing anything with it. Let me format this up a better. There we go. Okay, so let's explain a little bit about what's going on here. So as I said, there's a whole bunch of options you can set. Um, you can go through the documentation and decide what kind of options you want to use for your particular um, setting here. It, this line here is really where all this magic happens. So um, because our destination type is a data URL, right? We set that up here, destination type. Then we're returning raw camera data instead of a file, which is part of the reason why I have saved a photo album set as false, because you can't save a data URL to the photo album gallery. So by adding in that data image, um, setting it JPEG, base64, we can use an HTML image tag to display our freshly created snapshot because it is raw camera data. If you did actually want to save the file, which I'm going to be getting into saving data to the device in another uh, video, then you would need to decide, do you want to be able to display the data or the picture immediately, or do you want to um, save it and then the user can pull it up out of the gallery? So at this point, we're, we're all done, that's it. Uh, make sure you've saved. Now you can't test this. If we preview this and click take picture, like nothing happens. In fact, you can come look in the console and all you get is an error because it can't load that Cordova plugin in the browser. So what we have to do is we have to actually um, package up our app. So we come up to our export and we go to package. You choose your platform. Which kind of device are you going to test on? I'm testing on Android. You want to debug build and click package project. And so what is going to happen is it's going to email you an APK. And an APK is um, kind of like an EXE for Windows, uh, where an APK is a, is a file that your phone can run and execute to install the app on your device. So you're going to get an email from the creator team, and it's going to contain a .apk, or it's going to contain a link to download your .apk file. Now, I like to put mine in Dropbox so that I can then add them to my device. So you'll download that APK to your phone, however you want to go about it. And you'll need to make sure that you have the settings turned off that allow you to install apps from outside of the App Store. Now, if you're not sure how to do this on your particular device, you can Google it fairly easily. You know, how do I turn off the security permissions? Um, but otherwise, when you try to run an APK file, like on your Android device, it's going to give you a warning if you're not allowed to install it. But I'm going to go ahead and install it. Um, I already have the uh, settings turned off. So here you can see that I've installed the app and it's all ready to run. And so I'm going to click open and the app starts to run. And we can see our nice button. So when I click take picture, if you don't have your settings already set up, you'll get a little prompt saying, hey, are you going to allow this app? to access the camera. Of course, you want to click allow. The camera loads. So there it is. <laughs> Weird camera on camera action there. I could take a picture. Um, so let me take a picture of something. So there is the picture that I took of some toys on my desk. And we click the blue. In this case, I click the blue thing. 
and then it's going to take us over to the editor because remember we said editing is true so it's going to take me over to the photos app which is my default editor for photos if i want to crop it rotate it do something with it whatever i click done and now i can see it here in my app in that image control that is located on my page so i hope that this has been helpful uh, for you to be able to um, take a picture display the picture you, later we'll get into how we can save information to the device so if you want to take a picture and save it have it available in the gallery be able to use it as part of the app right um, if you do want the code for this one it's available on my github and as always if you have any questions or if you're running into any trouble leave me a comment thanks